I am going to perform the motor balancing on site, and at the conclusion, I will demonstrate how to save the influence coefficients for balancing similar motors. This will eliminate the need for using test weights on other identical fans, providing a more efficient and streamlined process. I am going to balance this motor using an iPad with the Wiser Vive application, and in this particular case, I am going to utilize a wireless Wiser accelerometer that we are going to position here and the laser sensor that connects to the Wiser device. Let's position it in a specific spot where it will not interfere with the rotation of our turbine. Let us position the laser sensor with its magnetic cup in this location. Let us activate the sensor to observe the laser's direction and then we will modify the angle. Before placing the laser sensor, put a reflective tape on the turbine so that when the laser crosses the reflective tape, it sends the signal to the optical sensor. So we must verify that the blue light illuminates in the rear of the optical sensor. Balancing on site is highly similar to balancing as I'm about to perform it right now. It's essentially the same procedure in practice. Let's open the balancing application. Let's choose a blueprint from the options. This screen that appears requires us to provide the weight of the rotor and the distance at which we are going to place the counterweights in order to proceed with the task. This is just to measure the level of quality. If I want to skip that part, I can skip it. This turbine weighs approximately one kilogram and the radius at which we are going to place the counterweights is 150 millimeters. We press the save button and then, on each subsequent run, it will display to us the remaining quality level of the imbalance of this rotor. All right, let's go ahead and connect the sensor now. We turn it on again, click here to connect to Wiser, click confirm, and we're ready to start balancing. To begin the run, we can open an RPM meter that also has real-time phase measurement. This is going to assist us in selecting the desired number of resolution lines and subsequently enable us to capture this data once it has reached a stable state. Here I can observe the RPM in this region, and down here I can perceive the spectrum. Let's check if the polar chart stabilizes as much as possible. In this case, I will increase the resolution a bit. Our initial run has already been completed. Now, we need to insert $1 for testing purposes into these turbines. We insert $1 as a test, using either a small sheet or, in this particular case, a washer that we will fold in half in order to securely attach it to the fan and ensure that it remains in position. And we're going to place it somewhere where I want to place it in a standard way. I'm going to put it at zero degrees, which would be the same mark where I put the reflective tape. However, no, it's not necessary for it to be there. Let's proceed with the second run, the test run. Once again, we open our real-time measurement window, and now we can clearly see that the vibration has increased significantly compared to before, indicating a notable change in the measurement. This step here is very important. We're gonna start with the initial run. We're gonna put the initial, and then for the test run, we're gonna put the second run, which is 22 millimeters per second. This part is really, really important. In all software, this works very similarly. However, the way to measure angles will depend on each software. In this software, we must input the rotation in the polar chart, which, in this case, rotates if I observe it from where I am going to measure the angles. The rotation needs to be set from where I am going to measure the angles, not necessarily the standard rotation of the motor, but from where I am looking at the fan, which, in this case, I am going to see it from the front and measure the angles from the front. So my rotation will be to the right or clockwise. 
Now it requests me for a quantity of 0.25 grams at a temperature of 50 degrees. Well, that is as long as I am going to place the dough here, what amount of dough should I put as a test? Let's eliminate it. Upon observation, we can see that there are three 4G units. So let's place three 4G units here and I positioned it at zero degrees if I had positioned it in another location. I would indicate that specific location with respect to my mark of the reflective tape. So the measurement of angles in the software, we are going to measure against the clock's hands. Even we have the option to choose in the settings to measure the degrees in favor or against the clock hands using either the European method or the American method. And in this particular case, we have selected the European method. We also realize that it is asking us for much less dough. So we are going to place a smaller round that I formed for this purpose. And we are going to place it at 50 degrees, just as the software indicates. Let's carry out another test run to assess the results. Let's reopen our screen and observe that the vibration has decreased considerably. Now, let's fine tune it to improve its performance. This will involve utilizing the influence coefficients that have already been saved in order to calculate and apply the necessary additional mass accurately. So I place the last run and it asks me for 0 to G at 60 degrees, that is, approximately the same weight that I previously put on it, and we are going to place it practically in the same spot. All right, make sure those counterweights ain't budging, cause they can fall off when the engine starts up. We are in the process of reopening our screen, and upon inspection, we observe that our phase has started to behave erratically, likely due to a significant drop in vibration levels. If you guys notice the level of quality, we're already way below the original level we wanted, which was a 6.3. Now we're at a 74. The balancing is ready. Let's just open the last file so you can see how it turned out. And here we are going to observe on the spectrum the vibration frequencies that remain in this engine, which in this case 1780 is the rotation one and the vibration is very low, as you can see here but there is a predominant frequency of electrical noise, which is 7,200 revolutions per minute. Well, in this type of engines, you can't fix that. Now I wanna show you how we're going to save the influence coefficients that we generated in this balancing. What is this going to be useful for? If I have additional engines or more identical fans similar to this one, I can utilize the same influence coefficients and avoid the need for a test run but proceed directly to the tune, to the process of fine tuning. The singular condition is that the accelerometer is positioned in the exact same location as where I recorded the influence coefficients, and the laser sensor is also pointing in the identical position as when we generated these influence coefficients without any deviation or variation in placement or direction. Those are the two conditions. The locations of both sensors have to be identical, that's why in this case, I pointed the laser at zero degrees. So let us proceed to the options menu where we will instruct the program to save the coefficients. We are going to specify a new folder for the saved files and name it cell one. Additionally, I will inform the program that the data corresponds to a single plane. We can leave it like this, and I already know that this is a single plane balancing. These are the influence coefficients, and whenever I want, I can open it again. I am going to demonstrate quickly how I would open it. If I go back to the balancing section, I can access the coefficients from here and you will observe that it takes me directly to Tom's location. Currently, I initiate the process, create a new run and position it in this trial. That is all. It will provide me with the weights that correspond to the subsequent turbine. Just to wrap up, it is recommended that you secure these counterweights in some safe way so that they don't come loose again. They are already under pressure. However, you can put a spot weld or glue on them so they don't come out again. That's all for today. See you in the next video.